Hello and welcome to Tinker's Adventure, I'm Kai. In this video, we will show you the full installation of our very own Tinker Design FJ front bumper. Designed and fabricated right here in Pennsylvania, the US of A. This bumper took years of engineering and real world testing, so we will make a separate video demonstrating the unique features and engineering behind this bumper. Once that video is ready, I will post the link in the description below. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that one coming. The shipment for this bumper consists of three main parts. The inner structure, the outer shell, and a hardware box. Our bumper is made from structural carbon steel, so they need to be coated to avoid corrosion. Please note inside the hardware box, there is also a pair of frame reinforcement brackets that also need to be coated. You will also find four welded nut plates, but they are made from stainless steel, so they do not need to be coated. The full installation involves three main sections. Factory components removal and preparations, the inner structure install, and at last the outer shell install. Now let's get started. First, remove the front grille. There are two screws and two plastic retaining clip on the top. Here is a closer look on how to remove the plastic retaining clip. There are three more plastic clips on the bottom side of the grill. Use a long screwdriver to pop them loose. The front grill can now be removed. Next, remove five plastic push pins on the top of the bumper cover. Remove two screws on each side of the bumper cover. This FJ has already been modified, but you should have a few more screws and clips on the bottom side. Start tugging from the very end of the bumper cover. With some effort, you should be able to pop the bumper cover off the vehicle. Next, remove the bumper cover top support. It is held down by five fasteners. Then remove this plastic piece at the corner. If you have a factory bumper, you should see a crash beam at this location. Remove it by taking out eight total nuts. If you have a winch, we need to reroute the AC line. Remove the AC line bracket and unclip it from the line. We will reroute the AC line behind the center brace to clear our winch. Therefore, we need to temporarily remove the center brace. The first step is to remove the dust cover of the hood latch, then the three bolts holding the hood latch in place. The center brace is held down by two fasteners, one on top, one on the bottom. We had the third fastener here due to an aftermarket transmission cooler. Remove the plastic clip from the AC line bracket. We will draw a new hole to relocate it. Bend the AC line as close to the radiator as possible, but without rubbing on any metal. Test fit the center brace. You're looking for a clearance all the way around the AC line behind the brace. Once you achieve the desired clearance, reinstall the center brace. We will reposition the plastic clip closer towards the radiator. We will draw a new same size hole one and a quarter inch from the base flange. The drill size should be 9 32nd inch or 7 millimeter. Drill through the bracket at the location we just marked. After drilling, you should clean up the hole and apply some paint to avoid corrosion. After the paint is dry, snap in the plastic clip and reinstall the AC line bracket. Cut off the excess AC line bracket as close to the clip as possible. Clean up the cut edge and reapply some paint to avoid corrosion. That is it for AC line rerouting. Check for clearance and make adjustment if necessary. Remove both bumper cover corner braces. There are two nuts on the side and one screw under the turn signal. Push towards the center of the vehicle 
and you can wiggle it out. Trim these brackets right under the headlights. Do not simply unbolt them, otherwise your headlight housing will get loose. Don't forget to clean up your cut edge and apply some paint to avoid corrosions. We can now reinstall the hood latch. And then the hood latch dust cover. On the frame mount, we need to hammer out the outer six studs. Make sure you hammer the sides of the studs to break the spot welds. Before the spot welds break loose, do not hammer in the axial direction. And here is a closer look on the three spot welds you need to break. Next, we will drill out the side weld nuts on each side to allow larger structural fasteners. Use half inch or 13 millimeter drill bit. Just watch out, don't drill through the other side of the frame rail. There will still be a thin shell of the weld nut remain in place. Use a chisel and a hammer to break those loose. Try to knock out all the large chunks. Get it as flat as you can, but don't need to go crazy about it. You will see how we utilize this hole in a few minutes. Get a magnet or a ball of adhesive to clean out the debris. Apply paint inside and outside the hole we just drilled. In the hardware box you receive with your bumper, you will find a piece of parts list specifying all the hardware. The hardwares are sub-kitted by numbers. For installation, we will follow the order of these sub-kit numbers. We will first wire the LED markers. Remove the side marker connectors. We will use kit 1 for this step. Trim back the sheath on the side marker harness so it is easier to work with. Apply the two wire T-tab onto the green and white wires. Green on top and white on bottom. It is easier to push the wire insulation into the conductor before closing the T-tab housing. I found it much more consistent by using two pliers simultaneously to close the housing. Sometimes you may not hear a definite click, but you should make sure the snap is engaged. Next, install the female connector onto the other side of the T-tab. Feed the wires into the plastic loops, red on the left and black on the right. Use a plier to engage the snap on each side. This is how yours should look like. On the LED markers, snip off the exposed ends on the wires and do the same to the male connectors. Splice two LED markers to a single male connector. Close the housing with pliers. Again, you may or may not hear a click, but the snap should be engaged. Repeat the process on the other wires. And here is how yours should look like after this step. Fish the harness back up and plug it back into the side marker. Plug and screw in the connector for the LED markers. There's only one way it can go in. Next, we will do some prep work on the outer shell, starting with kit number two the logo backer. Install the logo backer with four screws and nuts. Then we will install our iconic aluminum bezels with kit number three. Take turns and tighten the screws evenly and gradually. I found it easier to use a pair of pliers to hold the nuts in the back. You can install all other accessories to the shell at this step such as your hall's fair lead or your lights, which make it a little easier than installing them later. For the inner structure, we will start with kit number four to install the frame reinforcement brackets. Pop off this plastic plug and expose this frame hole. This is the hole for our welded frame nut. 
to create a flat surface for our frame reinforcement bracket. These washers will be sandwiched between the bracket and the frame rail. Start with the M10 screw with serrated bolt head. Fish this bolt through the hole we drilled. Apply a washer, then the frame reinforcement bracket. Hand thread the nut on just to keep everything in place. Next, get the silver color M12 1.25 pitch fine thread bolt. Install it into the threaded hole on the frame. Do not tighten at this point. And lastly, insert a gold color M12 bolt to the last hole. Make sure you insert a flat washer between the bracket and the frame rail. Insert the long welded nut strip and engage with this bolt. Make sure the plate of the nut strip is touching the frame rail. At this point, all hardware should be seated snugly by hand, but not tightened. Slide the inner structure onto the two remaining factory studs. Center on the studs and tighten the factory nuts. We will then use hardware kit 5 and 6 to complete the inner structure install. On top and bottom hole, make sure you have the M12 structural washer inserted between the inner structure and the frame reinforcement bracket. And just like all connections with multiple bolts, you should take turns and snug them up evenly. After all hardwares are seated snugly, you can now tighten them down to the final torque spec shown on the screen. After tightening these hardwares, you can go back and tighten the ones for the frame reinforcement brackets to the following torque specs. As a double check, make sure the structural washers are tightly sandwiched in place. Some winches such as this worn Xeon has oversized drum diameters. When the winch line is not neatly or tightly wound, it can get very close to the center brace. In these cases, we recommend trimming the center brace to get extra clearance for the winch line. Just make sure you clean up the sharp corners and apply paint to avoid corrosions. Now you can install your winch according to your winch install guide. Our winch mount design makes it easy to install and conduct maintenance down the road. Congratulations! Now you have finished the installation of the inner structure and a winch if you choose the wrong one. We can finally install the outer shell and see your FJ return with the new face. There are six more bolts holding the shell to the inner structure and let's get to it. These structural bracing on the shell doubles as assembly aid and hook onto the inner structure. Line up these features, tilt the top of the shell slightly inwards now you can hook the shell onto the inner structure and be hands-free. Let's come back to these LED markers. To install them, peel back the rubber grommets. Insert the LED markers and the grommets through the holes. Reinstall the rubber grommets, apply a little bit of lubricants, then press them into the holes. Next, use Hardware Kit 7 to install the four front-facing bolts. Insert the nut plate into the inner structure with the plate touching the structure. Thread the bolts and the washers into the nuts. This FJ is equipped with 1 inch body lift, but our shell can be adjusted to match the new body height. 5 eighths of an inch or 16 mm of body gap is recommended to accommodate body flexes. Torque the four button head bolts to the following torque specs. Next. Use Hardware Kit 8 and install two M10 fasteners to secure the bottom of the shell. Once you are satisfied with how your outer shell sits, you can snap on these plastic bolt head covers from Hardware Kit number 7. The notches are for removal and they should face downwards. Use a cutting tool to trim off the excess wheel well liner so that you can really show off your suspension. Reinstall the front grille, exactly the opposite sequence as removal. Push in the three bottom clips, install two plastic push pins, tighten two more screws, check none of your tools is in the way, and close the hood.
Now take a minute and a step back to admire what you have accomplished. Now go hit some trails and enjoy your newly transformed FJ Cruiser.